Bible Swag Pledge. Please repeat after me. I will soar safely in everything I do. I will work together respectfully. I will accept responsibility for my actions. I will allow my teachers to guide me towards excellence. What I do. to some of the greatest singers of our time. And now you know why. I'm crying, cause I love Her name is Melissa Jefferson. But she's known by her childhood nickname, Lizzo. This summer, she had the number one song and the cover of Elle magazine. Plus, she stole the show on MTV's Biggest Night. At 31, it seems Lizzo has finally arrived. And you all can change the world. She's also become a master of the positive attitude. In nearly every show, she leads the audience in her own personal mantra. I love you. You are beautiful. And you can do anything. Does it work? It works because talking bad to yourself works. It's the antidote to, oh, so stupid. It's like, no, you deserve this. You're intelligent. Words are so powerful. And she knows just how powerful those words can be. After a lifetime spent listening to mean or even well-meaning comments about her weight. It's like a little mosquito bite. Somebody's like, well, you a big girl, so you can never have short hair. You always gotta have a big hair because you're a big girl. And they say that lovingly, but I'm like, that's a little mosquito bite. You don't even know it's there, but soon you look up, you're covered in mosquito bites, and you're like, oh my God, I have all of these things, but they were so normalized to me because they were so innocent. People meant well. They meant well, but I had to like peel back a lot of layers. But unfortunately for me, when I was stripping back, I ended up at the bare bottom. I was at the, I was like at the low of low of anything. But it didn't start out that way. Lizzo was born in Detroit and grew up in the Houston suburbs. I would walk to my best friend's house and we played Spice Girls and we made our own little girl groups. Um, I was very occupied, I was very busy. I was writing novels. <laughs> Literally, you were writing <laughs> yeah, novels. Yeah, I, was, I would stay up in that room all night. I had school the next morning, but I would be up like four in the morning or sometimes when the sun comes up just writing. <laughs> Her first exposure to music was in elementary school. How did you start playing flute? I started playing flute in intermediate school, which is like fifth and sixth grade. We had a really cool band. <laughs> My band director, Mr. Browden, 
he would make us play all the songs on the radio and we would dance. So when we had concerts in the gym, the parents would come and they would just like get lit and be dancing in the stands and it was like a concert. So everybody wanted to be in band. Band was cool. It was cool in fifth and sixth grade. <laughs> and then? And then all of a sudden everybody left in like middle school, high school, but I stayed in it. So I remember in the fifth grade, I just wanted to be really good. I was like, I want to be really good at the flute. Everybody else was so bad. It was so hard to be good at it. It was, it's a very difficult instrument, but I, um, I became like obsessed with being good.